Hello and welcome to YourLocalNote.com. I'm RJ. Mike is behind the scenes trying to make me look good. That's a tough job, but uh, also make me sound good, which is a little bit easier for him. Uh, We're going to be hanging out with a a band, a a fun band, uh, and a little bit different than what we've had over the last couple of weeks. Pie-Eyed Preacher. We're going to be talking with them in just a couple minutes and uh, talking to them about their music. And, of course, we've got something uh, very special again lined up. Uh, They'll do one of their songs live. We always love it when the um, um, bands and the artists play live. So we've got them playing live in just a couple minutes. All right, let's get started. We're going to uh, start with the first song uh, from their album, Bone Setter. This is the title track of the album from the Pie Died Preacher- Preachers. Uh, it is called Bone Setter on yourlocalnote.com. Eyed Preacher from their album Bone Setter. That is the title track. I'm RJ. Thank you so much for checking us out here on yourlocalnote.com. I uh, want to introduce and welcome Pie Eyed Pie-Eyed Preacher. We got Matt, we got Sam, and we got Connor. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank right. you. Very good. Um, we're missing Whitey, right? Whitey, but I'm wearing his, his tattoo shirt. Okay. <laughs> so he's with us. All right. Very good. We don't want to leave anybody out. Let's talk about the song first, and I want to talk about the band. Sure. Um, who wrote this song? Oh, I did. Okay. Matt, do you do most of the writing for the for the band? I do most of the, the lyrics okay. for the band. All and right. I, like, you know, I'll, I'll send stuff. I'll send stuff to... Uh, Sam and, and Connor and and just say, Hey, you know, what do you guys like? Do you like this? And then generally they say yeah, no and I say, Well, that's okay, because we're gonna do it anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so and it just goes from there. So All right. So it's 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 you start with the idea, but then it's a collaboration after that. Yes. Okay, very yep. cool. Um Pie Pie Eyed Preacher, how'd you come up with that name? <laughs> 
You know, well, we, we, when you when you play for a three or four hour set in a pub, uh, you're generally not drunk. When you're done, you know you're not drinking, and everybody else is. Okay. So when you're when you're done with the set, everybody's pretty much drunk and, and talking. You know they they want to involve you in their conversations about how to fix all the world's problems. There you go. So I just started calling pirate preachers, and then it was kind of like, wow, that's a pretty good name for a band. So <laughs> there you go. Okay. Just went with it. Um, how'd you guys get together? Uh, I I started my my buddy Mike Gross and I started doing. Um, just doing Irish traditional, just, you know, out and about, like a side project when I lived in Nashville. Uh, and then I came home to Philly and uh, decided, you know, I was writing a lot of songs for the band, for, that were not, that didn't fit in our other band, which is Shaky DeVille, uh, which is a, more of an uh, old school hard rock band. And I was like, well, wow, this, these kind of fit better in Pied, in Pied Preachers. So then I decided, okay, well now I gotta put a band together. Okay, so you got two projects that you work on. Yeah. Now, yes. are all three of you in uh, both projects? Yeah. All, yeah. Everybody, yeah. Everybody okay. in, is in the same. Uh, and YD is too. So same you're, players in both bands. Okay, yeah. just different styles. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. How difficult is it? I mean, do you get to a point where sometimes uh, you neglect one uh, project over the other, or is it just, well, we're just going to concentrate on this project, and then when we're done with this, then we move on to the next project? Well, no. I mean, we... We went to, like, on our way down from Philly to Nashville to record the Shake It a Bell album last week. Um, you know, we played Pied Preachers on the way down to Virginia. We okay. Did, we did an all-night set. And then, the you know, after when we were done recording, we played a Shaky show, you know, on our way out. So, you know, it's it's awesome. So, I mean, no, I, I don't think we would care if... Shaky Deville did like ten shows in a row, and then Pirate Preachers did like twenty. It wouldn't matter. So it, it, as long as you're playing music, it seems like it's okay. Well, yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Irish music is is the, the cultural, and the, you know the, the meanings behind it is, uh, is something that like people need to learn about if they've if they have forgotten, and it makes people who haven't forgotten about the history of Ireland and American American Irish people um, makes it, you know, it makes them feel good. And it makes us feel great. And it has to be, I mean, which came first, Shaky DeVille or Pied Preachers? I think uh, Shaky DeVille. Okay. But it was, I was trying to play, like it, at one point, like Shaky DeVille is just a hard rock band. Right. And it's old school. Yes. Uh, so there's blues, American and Irish, a little bit of punk rolled in there, country. There's right. just kind of every. We play whatever we want. Okay. So at one point I was trying to uh, have an accordion player in Shakespeare, and it just was like, <laughs> okay, that doesn't work. That's at all. pushing the uh, limits yeah. a little bit too much. So it really, it really, they really had to be separated. So I mean, I was trying to do both at once, and it just there was just just a lot of songs. Like we write all the time. Okay. You know, I mean, constantly writing. Okay. And so, like, there's just a lot, and you just got to put one here and one here. Okay, then let's do this. Let's uh, go to the live song that you're going to play for us. Sure. Which we really appreciate. Uh, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about uh, the songwriting and, and how you determine which is going to be a shaky song and which is going to be a pie-eyed song. Absolutely. We'll talk about that when we get back. So right, right now, they're going to perform for us live. Uh, Matt, Sam, Connor, Pie-Eyed Preachers. The song is called Building Up and Tearing It All Down on YourLocalNote.com. Okay. Our boy Whitey is here in spirit. Okay. <laughs> Calpine and Castain, Fitzpatrick, Murphy, Ash, and Whippy's gang. I'm off and on the road, on my way to draw the door, when there's nothing left to do for Johnny Lang. I used to think that God made the mix up pick and hide, so Patty might know hell above the ground. Gangers big and tough, tell me hey, that hole out rough, keep building up and tell. Subway line on the boneless gang out past 
Sticking from a concrete cast Was a face of little Charlie Joe Divine I saw Bad McGurk Make Patty hate the work As a gas plate burst and he flew off the ground Tori said don't slack Won't be long till I'm back Keep building up and tearing it all down McCann got the better of his stammer in a week. That poor old stuttering man, he fell from the Hoover Dam. He was never ever more inclined to speak. That's how bad the car with a big fly over four into a concrete mixer spinning round. Was not his intent. Had a fine head of cement. Keep filling up. God, cause the likes of you and me won't get a goddamn thing unless we take it from the bastards in charge. It's a concrete master race to keep you in your place, or a union man to keep you on the ground. If you ever try to take part of what the bosses make, keep building up and tearing it all down. If you ever try to take Part of what the bus is made Keep filling up and tearing it all down Keep filling up and tearing it all down All right, very nice. Good job, guys. That's Pie-Eyed Preachers. And the song is called Building Up and Tearing It All Down from their LP, A Bone Setter. All right, Matt, what's yeah. this song about? The song's about the Irish uh, having to go everywhere and anywhere because there's no work in Ireland. Okay. So uh, the original song was um, by Brendan Behan. Okay. And he wrote it as far as uh, going, having to go to England from Ireland Okay. For, to search for work. Uh, we rearranged it and, you know, threw some lyrics around and made it, and, and made it basically... Uh, Everywhere, like if you go through history of the Irish the last, you know, couple hundred years, you see that they are everywhere. You know, South America, like you know, Asia, uh, Africa. Where there's work, they went. That's where they went. Yeah, and uh, and so that's what it's about. It's basically about the the conditions that were awful, and just keeping a, you know, the Irish have a way of just keeping a good attitude somehow. You know what I mean? Like in the worst conditions, and and that's what these you know that's where the, that's what makes the the music one, one part of what makes the music so unique. Now you mentioned that this song was written by someone else, but you arranged it. You do that yeah. with a number of songs, not yes. all not all of your songs, because uh, a lot of your songs are also just originals. Right. But you do like to rearrange uh, some of the songs. Yes. Um, how how do you go about approaching that? I mean, you look at a song like this song. What, what made you decide to rearrange? Well, with with this song, uh, we're we're American, so uh, we know you know and it. People in Ireland, they obviously know what what their families had to do to find work. Um, they also came to America, you know, and and in some of the most horrendous conditions, and we still and, and we're still able to establish themselves um, and to the communities that we have today. And you know, you know that, you know what I mean. So um, it's really that it that comes from your point of view. You know? Okay. So a lot of these lyrics, you know, they 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 hit you. 
and then you got some of your own. Okay. You know, so you're like, all right, I'm going to throw this. So you're adding and subtracting and moving around. Yeah, moving around. All right. Like like for this song, we moved it around to make it pretty, like, kind of global. Okay. You know, as because that's what, what it was. It was global. So, I mean, you you then obviously listen to a lot of Irish music. Yes. Uh, and you'll take a song that strikes you and go, okay, I can I can work with this. Right. And uh, you guys work with it too. You, Connor, you you do a little help with the rearranging. Yeah, you know, as much as I can, I usually just tag along for the ride and okay. uh, see what happens. <laughs> He's a, bit, he's a bit awkward. Okay. But. All right. So I shouldn't have called on him then is what you're saying. No, it, yeah. Like, you know, like, we just, you know, you hash it out just like you would any other song, like any right. original song. You just hash it out. And then whatever, you know, we're a bit more aggressive, um, I think, than uh, more of the, you know, the traditional or rebel, traditional or traditional rebel songs. Right. Uh, but that's just our style. We're just kind of, there's kind of no BS with sure. Us, you know, sure. There's there's no gray area. It's black and white, and this is what we're doing. So so Sam, if I remember correctly, you play a few instruments. Yeah. So, are, when you're approached by Matt, hey, this is my idea. What do you think? Are you thinking of of different instruments that will yeah, go well yeah, with I'm that? I'm thinking of all. See which one would fit best with the song. You know, if it's an old C song, I usually want to do something with a squeeze box or a squeeze box or an accordion. Right. You know. Okay, so and it all it all changes when you're doing Shaky Deville stuff. Yes. Okay. Now you've got a new album with Shaky Deville. Yes. So we're gonna have you come back in a couple weeks to talk about that album. Awesome. Is that gonna be okay? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So instead of just doing two albums at once, let's sure let's yeah. devote you know yeah. uh, one show to uh, uh, Pie Eyed Preachers and then another to Shaky Deville. Sure. Um, awesome. So Sam, you're the youngest in this uh, in this group. Oh, oh yeah. Connor is. Connor's. My nickname is Young Sam, but he's slightly younger. Wow. Yeah, he's okay. slightly younger Connor. So, Doesn't have the same ring to it. So, <laughs> <laughs> young Connor. Yeah. How do you? How did you guys get attracted to this type of music, or is this something that was just part of your growing up? It's so, been in the in the background. Irish folk music has been in the background of my childhood for you know a while. I used to listen to it as a kid. Clancy okay. Brothers so your your parent your parents listened to a lot of it. So well, my, my dad listened to a lot of different types of music. Okay. Um, I got into Irish music more with the people I used to hang around with you okay. know, friends but um, yeah, it just started growing on me once I started playing an instrument I'm like oh I can play you know Irish folk music okay alright Connor same thing yeah I, I mean I definitely grew up with it I don't know if you know that's my uncle Oh, Matt's my uncle. So. Oh, okay. Did not know <laughs> yeah, that. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So right. I mean, I always had him around, putting on, you know. So you had no choice. Radio. You oh, had yeah. no choice. Subliners, <laughs> so, Somebody Nico. in this room bought him a guitar and an amp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He gave me my first guitar, and okay. so I, my dad also just always Irish yeah. folk music. Okay. Yeah. But Ronnie Drew. I mean. All right. Ronnie Drew. Ronnie Drew's big in our family. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. He's a big favorite. Okay. Ronnie Drew, Luke Kelly, Dubliners. Obviously, Pogues, you know, Tommy Makeham, Clancy Brothers. I mean, and and then you separate that when you write for, with the other project. Yes. Okay. And so you're just writing all the time. Basically, yeah. Uh, so I don't know if there. I think there might be like a. I don't know if there's a a a, a, a mental. <laughs> mental, like psychological, mental separation? Yeah, I don't know if there's like a psychological term for it. Okay. But basically split I wake up. Split yeah, I don't know what it is. <laughs> but I wake up with music on my brain and I go to bed with music on my brain. Uh, do you get up in the middle of the night and write things yes. down? Okay, yes. so you're constantly writing. Yes. Yeah. Do, you, do you have to uh, experience uh, what you write about or it always, are you more? It always, yeah, it always starts yeah. out that way. Okay. It always starts out with, with experiencing it. And, and then, then you're more of a, but you like to be a storyteller too. Yeah, without doubt. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, that's fun. And I, there's some like we uh, we're huge uh, military supporters, obviously. Right. Yes. My brother, his father is right. in Afghanistan. My oh, okay. Steve. Yeah. All right. Uh, Best of luck to him. Yeah. Thank you. He's okay. on his last tour. He'll be back in a month and a half. Nice. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. So my other brothers have all they're done their time and, right. and they're retired. Okay. And thank God, Keith and, and Rick and. Uh, and my father was uh, 33 years. Okay. 
military army. So l- just a little experience in your family. Yeah, a little bit. So did, and you ta- you said that you know before we even started, you said you were sort of an army brat. So yeah. when you were younger, did you find yourself telling a lot of stories because you moved around a lot and you sort of had to uh, make new friends constantly? Well, I mean, is it that situation? Honestly, no. It's it's like the experience. It, it's it's uh, like coming back here uh, and and settling into like civilian life where I think I was 15 or 16 or whatever it was um was more of like a culture shock okay because like you, you're used you know you, you just you have all these experiences and you're living on an American base yes you know and that those are your friends like these these military kids are, are your sure. friends sure so there you don't have the you know you don't you didn't grow up in Upper Darby you no know, you, you, you have a, a whole different experience right so so there, there's a lot to talk about. Right. You know, there's uh, just on a daily, lo- you know, yeah. Tyler could tell you, growing, just growing up on a military base, especially somewhere like Bragg or, you know, some, you know, one of the, like, where they ex- do all the, a lot of the exercises. Sure, sure. I mean, good Lord. Uh, okay. You know. Okay. All right, let's do this. Let's go to song number three. Uh, we'll play that and we'll, uh, we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about your experience in Nashville and recording this album. Does that sound good? Sure. All right, that's coming up next. Uh, right now, the song is called It's Hard. Uh, we're hanging with the Pie Eyed Preachers, and their LP is called Bone Setter on yourlocalnote.com. The song is called It's Hard from the album Bone Setter, and the band is Pie-Eyed Preachers. 
Guys, uh, let's. Uh, I guess we'll go to you, Matt, uh, since you're the main songwriter. What is this song about? Uh, it's hard. My my grandfather uh, was a uh, captain. I, was it, my grandfather was a, was a sea captain on a, on a, on a, on a fishing boats. Okay. He also uh, started the North American Fishermen's Union. Oh, okay. Uh, captain Pat McHugh, Cappy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so ba- basically that and my my father who. Was you know always go on military exercises and come back. So it's basically just about how hard it is to be away from be away from home. So okay. It's kind of like an old sea shanty. Sure, but it, you know. Like, but the, and this is an original song. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And right. again, uh, so it's it's a life experience, but then you add to it as far as you know your storytelling. Yeah, I I, I kind of made it like I just had a, like an idea in my head of of uh, you know when you're on a small bo- boat and you got to bring something home to sell, you know and. Right. How hard it is to stay, have to stay out there and not be around your wife and kids. And so, you know, it does relate as far as military. My, my brother, Steve, like I said, and, you know, my brother Rick was, was out, was, you know, uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan for so long. My brother Keith, he goes and trains Coast Guards around the world. He, I mean, that's what they do for a living. And right. If they could stay home. They would, you know what I mean, with their family. But, but we got bills to pay, right? You got to do what you do, you know? Okay. Yeah. How how difficult is it for you guys, Connor and Sam, keeping up with Matt and his ideas? It seems like he's throwing out ideas on a constant basis. Do you ever yes. say to him, Matt, can we just concentrate on this right now? Can you take that idea and hold off on it? Yeah, well, by the time we start writing the music to the songs that he writes, he, he's he, on to a different song, you know? It's hard to get. It's hard to get him back. The worst part is when he changes it live. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we never play the same song twice. So. Okay, well that's good for people same to see song. you live. You, you know, if you saw me last night, don't worry about it. It's going to be completely different tomorrow <laughs> night. Sure. So an old Irish song on the spot the other night, and we yeah, just with the flow. Uh, well. so, so you have to pay attention to him. Yeah, yeah. I've got to watch him constantly. Sam Sam has been playing with him a little longer, so he's a little bit more used to it than I am. Yeah, once you get up to three years, you, you're about yeah. 50% of the way <laughs> into knowing his style. Okay. So you so nothing surprises you anymore. No. Not so really. you, you hear something different, it's not you gonna throw with the you're not gonna throw it's not gonna throw you off. You'll just be like, okay. He's like, yeah, okay. There that's go- new. That's that's okay. <laughs> There goes Matt. Very nice. I think you two can write a song about that. Yeah, I, there's an idea. Yeah. I want credit. I'm, oh, open. <laughs> I'm open to all ideas. Uh, that's good. So, um, you you've got this project. You recorded this down in Nashville. Yes. What made you pick Nashville to to record this album? Well, I went to Nashville. Uh, originally, I was going. I was thinking of going to um, music school, like to to learn uh, how to record and all that. I'm not really good with school, so that didn't go too well once I got to Nashville. Sure. But I wanted to learn how to, uh, I just wanted to be the best music- musician that I could be. Right. And I, like I said, I've always written stuff, you know, so um, just as far as like learning the guitar and learning how to operate a band. Did you teach yourself? Uh, I music? did. So you, this is all self-taught? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Even writing music is self-taught? Well I, well, I still can't read music. You can't read music? No. Connor, Sam, can you guys read music? I I, I took vi- violin and classical piano, so I can read treble and bass clef. Okay, <laughs> for what it's worth. S- Sam, no, <laughs> you just play by ear. I can look. I can see the notes, but I can't really play them. Really interesting. Everything's by ear. Okay, wow. and that's the same with you. Everything's by yeah, ear. Yeah, I, I I watched uh, old school. When I was five years old, my brother bought the first ACDC album home. Okay, I wore that bastard out. You know? <laughs> so to learn to for, to learn guitar, I, I would watch ACDC and Thin Lizzy videos. Cause okay, Scott Gorham is is a, one of my favorite guitarists, and obviously Angus Young. Right. So I would just watch the video, see what they did, pause it, find it on the guitar, and then once I could actually play some songs, uh, my mother bought me a chord book. With like thousands of chords, right, right, and I went, went through that, picked the ones that I liked, and just it's, it's funny because some sometimes they call them like these guys call them mat chords, but they're not actually mat chords. <laughs> like I didn't make them up. They're real right. chords. They're yeah. actual real chords Nobody that I just like. Them, they're made, they're <laughs> but no one knows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it sounds good though, right? Sure does. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you you just follow. We're here. Aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's great. <laughs> All right. So you you went to Nashville for to school, yeah. And then you dragged these guys down and said, "Let's record an album here." <coughs> no, I, uh, I, I, we had opened up for um, for a, a band called Hillbilly Casino. Okay. A couple of times. And they're just a phenomenal band. If if you don't know who they are, Hillbilly Casino is just a. They're a Look them up. Band. Okay. Yeah, and my 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 buddy D was uh, is the, was drumming for them at the time, and uh, Jeff is the bass player, and uh, somebody had just said, "Man, you guys need to record that." So we did, and the the the, sh- the sh- first Shake It Ville album, and then when the, with the Pied Preachers album. Before I left Nashville, I just had this idea that I really wanted to, to uh, write, to record an album with D or and Jeff, you know, and and from Hillbilly Casino, Ronnie Crutcher also joined in. You know, he he played on uh, it's hard and and uh, so that's what we did. D, like, so both know. projects have been recorded in Nashville. Yes. Okay. Everything's right. been recorded. Now. Yeah. Okay. So the third CD, the third band CD, which is the second Shake the Ville CD, we just finished last week. Okay. So that's the third with with Jeff and D. Okay. And uh, like I said, uh, like D D is a, a drummer, so like mm-hmm. he he's not with Hillbilly Casino anymore, but uh, he records bands and and he's a you know he's a pro drummer. Right. And, okay. And Jeff is just a badass bass player you know, okay great guy and and nashville is a uh, just a tremendous place to to record and and to play too well right yeah i don't think people realize like how uh how good you are if you can hang with nashville yeah then you're doing you know, you're doing all right yeah you know there, I mean? there are some really really talented people there oh uh, without a doubt yeah. and so uh and and i left because uh quite honestly uh I just missed home. So I understand. And you know what yeah. was funny? Who were we talking to? Um, we were interviewing someone, and I can't remember who it was. I think it was uh, the Williams boy, where he played in Nashville. He played at one of the bars, and he started to play a cover, and they threw him out. Oh, wow. Because you can't play covers there. Oh, wow. you got to play original stuff. Yeah, there's some bars that are, that are like that. Yeah. And there's the, uh, then there's the tourist bars, the honky-tonks, yes. uh, that where you only play covers. Right. And you kind of showcase your talent. Yeah. And you know, everybody's got their own cards, like I'm a violin player. I'm oh, sure. Player. It, it's, you know. it's an amazing place. Yeah, and then there's other places where, no, you can't play. You know. Right. When, you, when you're booking shows, there are certain venues, they don't want to have anything to do with cover bands right you know they just want original music yeah, they want, which they is want good to try to support original music. yes which is good yeah and uh, um so, but you you um go from there you're back here yes now you, you you spent a lot of time around the world but you did a lot of your growing up here in the philadelphia area yeah between boston and philadelphia I, that's 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 the most i've, I've stayed anywhere is actually germany boston and philadelphia are about equal Okay. So it's funny because I'm a uh, Sam's a big Flyers fan. Okay. And I'm a Bruins fan, nice. but I'm oh, also yeah. a Flyers fan. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's kind of tough to do, though. It's, it's kind of tough to do. It's not for me. Okay. You know, because you know whoever wins, I, I think I'm, I'm I, good. Yeah. <laughs> I think though, really, you got to be on one side or the other, man. You know. <laughs> I understand. Well, this Flyers, year I'm, I'm get. a Flyers fan because the yeah. Bruins are out. Oh. One of them are in the playoffs. So, right. You know, yeah, so whoever's in the playoffs. What? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay, okay. That's that's convers- that conversation's <laughs> over. So. Yeah, what, what, yeah. What, what happened to the Bruins? It just, they, I don't know what happened. I, I'm they didn't good. want to be in the playoffs. Uh, they must not have been. Yeah. Couple, a couple weeks ago, my wife asked me, she goes, how are the Bruins doing? I said, oh, they look pretty good. I think they're, they're going to, yeah, they're, they'll make the playoffs. And then all of a sudden, last week, I'm looking at the standings. I'm going, holy crap, they're not going to make it. So they didn't make it. I so, didn't, somebody told us in the studio, right? And, and I didn't believe it. Oh yeah. I'm like, what? Oh wow, yeah. Man, just, oh, what are you talking about? Last Saturday, I was I was actually working for WIP at the time, and uh, the, you know the I saw the score. They got crushed six to one. Yeah, but I was oh, like, oh my god, yeah. talk about mailing it in. Well, this guy tried to uh, he tried to bust my stones at the, the the show we played after before we left Nashville. He's like, oh, I think there's something we have to talk about. And then he got really serious. And then, like, what is it, buddy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I felt really bad. I was like, uh, No, nah, don't feel bad. The team's That's out good. of playoffs, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, but the Flyers are in. So I was so, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Flyers are playing well. Yeah, they're playing great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Enough sports talk. Yes. Uh, let's get back to music. Yes, sir. Uh, you guys playing live anywhere locally soon? Uh, Nothing no. on the books. Not right now. Okay. But you do plan because. As well, we're, we're in the middle of booking. 
so like you know we have like festivals that were with between philly well between baltimore and maine that we're good we're going to be playing over the summer. okay okay so we're putting our schedule together um and then generally even when we try not to book somebody calls and asks if, if we can play so nice nice so it's always kind of you just got to pay attention to the website expect a busy summer then yes Excellent. Yep. Very good. Well, yep. guys, thank you so much. It's been great hanging with you. Thank you. Best of luck with both projects. Um, why don't you email me? Uh, who emailed me? Was it you, Matt, that emailed me, or is it uh, Sam? Sam, could, yeah. yeah. Okay. Email me, and we'll make, we'll make it uh, uh, set up a time to get Shaky to Villain. Definitely. Okay. Awesome. It'd be an honor. Talk about that. That would be great. Thank you very much. Again, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, we've got another uh, podcast, and I mean a vidcast. This podcast, after it's live, will now be featured on our website uh, starting on Monday on the front page. Awesome. It'll, it'll be up there all week. And then it's with us uh, always in the archives. So if people are looking for Pie Eyed uh, Preachers, they just type it in our search uh, box and it comes up and you can hear it anytime you guys want. So, you know, if you're not feeling great and you want to hear yourself again, just go to our site. Well, if I, if I could throw out there, uh, we have a, a friend band who's an Irish band here in Philly, uh, Mass Folk Commons. And if you get a chance to check them out, um, they are great. What's they, the name of that band again? Mass Folk Commons. Mass Folk Commons. They are a phenomenal band. Okay. And the the, the Bogside Boys, that was it called? Bogside Rogues? Bogside, yeah. Those guys, I think everybody knows them. They're, they're a great band. Great okay. Band. Support your local Irish music. Okay. Coming up on uh, Wednesday the 20th, a week from uh, tomorrow, we've got Effusion 35 will be live here in the studio with us. And as I said, do you want to catch this again uh, starting on Monday? Uh, we've got Pie Eyed Preachers right on our front page, right on the home page. Awesome. Again, thank you, guys. Uh, we're going to wrap things up with Greenland Whale Fisheries real quickly, Matt. What is this song about? Greenland Whale Fisheries. It's a whaling, it's a, it's a whaling song. It's about, you know, going out to the coldest waters on the planet and whaling and, and hoping nothing goes wrong. You know? Is this an old Irish folk it song? It is. It's an old Irish. We that re you rearranged? Re rearranged it. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Again, thanks, guys, and uh, best of luck with your touring and uh, uh, all your projects. Thank you very Thank you. much. All Thanks right. To both of you. This is Greenland Whale Fisheries uh, from the album Bone Setter, and the band is Pie Eyed Preachers, and this is your local note .com. In 1896, on March the 18th day, we hoisted our colors to the top of the mast, and for Greenland sailed away.